your feel-good breakfast show. And earlier on the show, we spoke about it. One of South Africa's icons. Oh, it is with deep sadness that South Africa bids farewell to one of its greatest icons, anti-apartheid activist, speaker, novelist, uh, Nobel Prize winner, and author. Nadine Gordimer has died. And of course, we want to talk about it to find out more about her life. And joining us on the show this morning, cultural activist and also the CEO of the South African History Online, Mr. Omar Batsha. Welcome to the show. Are you there? Yes, Ellen. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Only a pleasure. We'd love to chat to you. I mean, she cared so deeply about South Africa. And if we think about it, she's one of the people that had an ongoing struggle to make sure that we believe in a new democracy. How important was her role in the downfall of apartheid? And how did she go about in bringing change? Well, first and foremost, you know, she started off not as a political person at all. She big one, She's an author, first and foremost. And over the years, as she began to develop her craft, looked at her society, uh, the themes about oppression, the differences between whites and blacks, and most important, she saw this through a very finely drawn portraits of people. But uh, yes, so she, she, uh, you know, when it becomes really big. Be politically active and outspoken after the 1960s, after mm -hmm. Sharpeville. But prior to that, she was very much involved with the literary and political circles in Johannesburg, but, and her work began to reflect that. I remember during the, the South African government and, and uh, in previous times when I was at school even, I remember that some of her works were banned. Why was that? What was the reason for the banning of some of her works? Well, first and foremost, you know, the apartheid government uh, was, you know, a, a highly repressive state and, 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 and um, you know, there the were a whole series of laws one of which was censorship. Mm. And they used it to close down the spaces for dissent or, uh, and, 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 you know, even the issues of sex and morality, you know, anything that was outside their own worldview, they began to censor. And, you know, Nadine Godema's work uh, dealt with very intimate things, uh, and then sh that was one uh, reason. Uh, some of one of her works uh, that was banned, and then secondly, her book on the life of a revolutionary, a white revolutionary. Now, it, you know, uh, that book was banned for a while. Um, you know, and uh, but not not for long. Because she was, uh, uh, you know, she was uh, a very famous writer, and then they realized that it was doing them more harm internationally, so they lifted the ban. Uh, unlike some of us, who our books were banned and never were lifted until mm -hmm. 1990. Um, you know, she was never detained or prosecuted, but uh, uh, and but and she used her space. She used her position. Um, to to speak out um, largely around the issue of banning uh, and censorship. Now, I mean, I'm looking at her work, and I know that she famously penned Nelson Mandela's speech that said, uh, "I'm prepared to die." And we we all think about it, you know. And even the words that were said, I, I was told that. Gordima, that Ms. Nadine was one of the people that Madiba wanted to see when he was released from prison. Why is that? I mean, was it was it that important for him? Well, first and foremost, you know, she didn't pen the speech. You know, Mandela worked on the the speech for weeks, and um, and and then he, uh, she was asked through um, uh, you know the lawyers to help. Uh, edited, so mm -hmm. she she did some work on the editing of the speech, but more than that, you know, um, he, when she, Mandela was in prison, he he was able to read uh, 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 some of her work, uh, and and yeah, and he was very impressed because it her work provided people 
black people in particular, a, a very interesting, important insight into the thinking of white society, how it worked, in the, and in particular the work on, uh, uh, you know, uh, where she writes about a white revolutionary. Mm -hmm. It was ba largely based on the life of Bram Fischer and his children. Uh, and, and Mandela knew that family very well, and, and he was actually very, very strongly influenced by the book. He read it a number of times from what we, what we gather. And so, yeah, he wanted to meet her. And he was, she was also f a, a mutual friend of George Bischoff's, his lawyer. Mm. So, you know, he met her and they spoke about the book and how, you know, he was drawn to the incredible portrait that she had drawn of this family. And, uh, and then they become very close friends. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. Thank you very much. We've lost a great writer and a patriot and someone that's definitely had a contribution in South Africa and its growth. Yes. We appreciate your contribution as well, Mr. Thank Butcher. You very Thank much. you so much. Wow, this is your Feel Good Breakfast show. We're talking about the passing of Nadine Vorderman and also her contribution to South African literacy and uh, also what she's done in terms of uh, literally uh, speaking against apartheid. Well, she lives on not just in our shelves, but uh, also by the things that she said and the things that she wrote about. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show. We'll be back after this.